So, first to start is Rannar Jónsson, chairman of Geðhjálp, who will give us an opening statement. Welcome, Rannar. So, yeah, again, thank you for to our international guests um, and our Icelandic speakers, of course. This topic we are talking about here today is about paradigm shift in, in mental health, and it's also, a, a, you could say, a, a social, a kind of a social revolution. Um, because it has implications much uh, farther than just a mental health. Mental health for the last decades has been become a very technical term. Um, so I'd like to just, you know, um, take you with me on a little journey because I want to tell you about how I came into this world and, and, and what I, I made of this is mental health world, you see? And it all sort of starts with a, um, I sometimes feels like I'm in the story Alice in Wonderland. About 10 years ago, I, I found myself in a big crisis. And, absolute, and, and as a matter of fact, I had been for, for many years, I'd been felt something amiss in my life, something was not right, something was, uh, things were not working out for me in, in life. And um, later on, I would and many other people would put different labels on this experience. Some people call it depression, some people call it anxiety. And if you would have talked to me at different times in my life, you know, I would have surely would have been diagnosed with a thing or two. Um, but I found myself in a, in a very difficult crisis and, and, and I've, I've, my outlook on life was very bleak and, and I started to think about what do I do? And I started to uh, look for what are my options and uh, I started to read a lot, lot about, you know, me meeting people and, and I, I visited professionals, the psychiatrists and and uh, and I tried to get informed about my options. Um, and somehow I had the hunch that I, I, I wanted to find the people that had overcome this experience, that had recovered. Um, when I I had my own like prejudices about about this thing about, about uh, what it means to be facing mental challenges and these uh, uh, these things I got from my my social environment my culture from the movies and on the slides you have there you know one flew over the cuckoo's nest which was a uh, and the other one is from uh, from our Icelandic. Um, Angels of the Universe, which was, uh, these are different narratives and, and, and uh, tell a story about certain situation and, and uh, but much of, much, much of what I thought about these things, and I thought, I thought myself as, a, as an informed person about these issues, they were simply wrong and, and um, I was lucky. I found the people. I found a community um, of people that um, uh, here in Iceland and in different countries that are um, that were working towards different understanding of, of, of this, different formulations of this these problems, and uh, people that gave me hope. And um, I recovered. And. Uh, these people, and, and still today, I'm, I'm in, in touch with many people here in Iceland and in many other places, people that have been there, have been, been into the land of dragons and lived to tell the tale. And uh, this experience changed my life. Um, many of these people 
have been harmed by, or they, their experience is they have been harmed by the mental health system. And there is, can be no um, argument about this. You don't argue, argue about people's experience. I know my experience. And, uh, and we should also respect people's experience and we should listen. And, and it's very interesting. We're living in a very interesting times, you know, the, the Me Too, hashtag Me Too. You know, every day we, we are hearing things. And, and this, is, this is something very, very important. And, uh, you know, this is a social story that has been um, locked away for a very long time. It's a very painful experience that some women, many women have, have felt, and, and it's an experience that has been sitting in there and, and it's been poisoning their lives. And I also had my stories of, of poison in my life, stories that, that I couldn't get out. And uh, I had this moment, I was, for three years, I was, every day I was meeting people, we, it was a society of people, um, you people here might know the uh, association called Hugarable in Icelandic, Mind Power in, in English, and one day I was sitting there and I was thinking, this is the exact place where I like to be. And the world, the universe is as it should be. It was, it was, a, it was a wonderful moment. Um, and for me, things started to work out. Because I had a narrative that told me that I could recover. The social narrative that, that is going on in Iceland and in much of the world is a very different narrative. It's about um, biomedical um, dysfunction. And uh, if you ask, I think, and I, I don't know if there are studies about this, and I, don't, I haven't heard, heard of them, and I, I know some American studies that are say that, and I don't think we are much different than some 80 or 90% of the population is, if asked, they would say, the causes of mental health challenges are biological or um, <laughs> uh, biochemical imbalances in the brain. And this is a social narrative, but this is also a uh, thing that is scientifically incorrect. That is, there is nothing in science that substantiates this narrative. And uh, the problem with this is that um, once you have the population believe in, in this kind of narrative, you have the politicians, the people that uh, have the power, the people that make decisions, they will allocate money, they will allocate resources uh, in this direction. That means, and we know this in Iceland because we, we are the record, world record holders in, in consuming um, psychiatric medications of, of, of kinds. Um, but this is also a thing that brings many problems. It is not that the, the, our mental health system doesn't work for some people. I know it does, and I, I know some people that, that it have, have that have um, um, had very good experience. But what I'm saying that for many, very many people, things are not working, and that is a big problem. And and uh, well, for me, I'm I'm a, like a I'm a passionate about these things, and and I I just coming into contact with this, and I'm I'm following the research, and I'm I'm, I'm seeing the research, and and things are not adding up. And people are not being told. Huh? For instance, uh, here is a long-term studies on, say, medication in schizophrenia are not very common. I know of two uh, recent, and they're they're telling 
a very different story. You see, um, what we see from these resources, this is one from uh, Martin Harrow in the US, and there is another one from Wundering in the Netherlands, and they're telling very much the same story, that after about two years, uh, what happens when once people taper off uh, psychiatric medication, their lives will improve more than those who uh, keep on the medication. And you see, this is a very distinct, this is, this is a resource that is ongoing, has been for, I think, 20 years now. This is from the 15 year um, uh, review. And uh, you see, of psycho psychotics, there was something like 45% people were functioning as uh, having a work or, or, or study and were um, had an active role in society compared to 5% on antipsychotics. This is that's the story of the long term, but we are very much focused on the short term because this difference starts to become distinct after two years. Because there's a turbulent time for two years. And we must give people time, two or three years to, you know, to to make the corrections they need to make. But we can, We have to stop the coercion, stop the violence that people, some people are facing, and the threat of violence. And there are, there are many other things that are simply wrong, and there is very many, there is very much bad science involved. And I, I, I ain't going to go very much into this, but there, there are uh, the most grave uh, problem uh, is what we call publishing bias. Publishing bias is when you make a research, it doesn't turn out the way that you want, and you put it into your drawer, and it doesn't get published. Uh, no, what we know from, for example, um, research into um, SSRIs, the antidepressants, is like 50% of the research has been withheld. And this gives a very, very uh, skewed uh, picture of what is actually happening. And you know, we know there are very uh, strong incentives at, at work. There's, there's very much money at stake. So, but just to say, if I throw up a coin for 100 times and I withdraw like 50 of the hats, I just, I don't, I don't let you know. I, I only tell you about the tales, and your, and I will say tell you I'm, I'm a genius. I can, you know, turn up the tales every time. It's only half of the tale is told, and that is, that is, it's simply not right. Uh, another very uh, big problem is ghostwriting. I'm just, you know just to point to a, um, some very serious errors that are, are in, in our science, that is, uh, there are medical companies that write uh, uh, articles about the research that are published in peer-reviewed journals, and you have um, key opinion leaders, they put their name into these uh, research. And this is a problem, and this is a, this is a problem that scientists have to a result because in this you cannot uh, simply you cannot trust the science and that is that is very bad and so I'm very happy to have these um, these guests and, and and the report from Danius Puras was like I know uh, people are thrilled in in um, people with lived experiences organizations all over the world they were thrilled to hear it uh, and I was just amazed at you know, this is, uh, you should take the time and read the report and, and, and the last two pages, there are some excellent recommendations that the powers, the politicians should take and, and consider seriously. Um, also, to my, much to my amazement, I've become a fanboy of the British Psychological Association. What these guys have been doing is just terrific. Uh, you should read the report, so on, on the, 
understanding psychosis and schizophrenia. Last month they had a um, big forum in, in London, you know, telling about the new framework that, that some people have been working on for five years, among others, Peter Kinteman. I don't know if he's going to tell us about them. It's called the Power Threat Meaning Framework. And it's some, these are exciting times. There is, there is, there is so much happening. Uh, I know I, I'm, I will go a little over my time, but I would like to talk to you about a serious problem that we could call the funeral problem. This guy there, I, I, I like, the, I like, the, like the, the, the photo of the guy. He's, he's like the math scientist looking, and this guy is called Max Planck. He's, he's a renowned sci uh, physicist who had the Nobel Prize. He's, he's called the inventor of quantum physics. And these guys in physics, they, they know their stuff. They are, they are serious scientists. And what he said, that's <laughs> very interesting. He said, you know, science advances one funeral at a time, meaning that a new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die and a new generation grows up that is familiar with it. It's, it seems to be very different for, difficult for us humans to um, you know, to turn a page and, and, and accept new truths. And it goes for us all, and I know, and I, I've, I've had some painful experiences uh, of myself. Um, and also, there is a, there's another guy, that, wonderful quotations by Upton Sinclair, that it's difficult to get a man to understand something when its salary depends on, upon his not understanding it. So uh, there are very strong is incentives. There are people. Um, that our whole careers um, are, um, they have been telling people a certain story. And this thing about the chemical imbalance of the brain and, 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 and to ask them to say, no, it isn't, it isn't true. And it's gonna be very difficult. Some people are gonna be angry. Some people are gonna, gonna get insulted. And that is very necessary. And I hope that some people will because then we are making some headway because if you're going to change your life, if you're going to change your society, you must look at the mirror and you must make some pretty uh, important decisions in your life. And that goes for um, recovering from mental health challenges of all kinds, and that goes for social changes. And so we need a paradigm shift. Um, I have, there is, I, we have every reason to be optimistic. There are some people, tanks that are working terrifically, and we are making headway in some places, but we need to get the powers that be to understand. The politicians, we must get this story across. Uh, we must inform people that ab about these things. Uh, and there are all kinds of exciting, uh, Fiona Morrissey will talk about advanced directives. How can we do away with the violence? How can we do away with the coercion? There are things like peer run respites. There are things like the new uh, power threat meaning framework. There is, but the interesting things, I sense there is something big shake, shaking up, uh, shaping up because there is like a synchronization of forces. Now there's the, and I'm told that you know many people, the uh, uh, professionals are are opening up to new kind of ideas and, and uh, so. But this is all I have to say and I I'm, I'm look very much forward to hear what our guests and our Icelandic friends have to say. Thank you.